warning everybody, that is what you call cutting it to the last absolute second. That footage you just shot was shot this morning. I went out with my friend Sean Bagshaw. We went out to catch some of the last fall colors. Sadly, by the time the light came up enough to illuminate the fall colors, the sky had gone horrible. But as you saw in that video, we were driving around and suddenly the sunrise came up that we did not expect that was absolutely gorgeous. So we revved our way around the corner, found a spot to shoot from and got a shot. And what you saw in there is what I managed to put together between 8.30 a.m. when we got back into, or I got back to the studio this morning till 9.30 now when we started. Uh, not a bad little edit, but uh, that was quickly thrown together. So welcome everybody and good morning. This is Photo Joseph's Photo Moment, the first live daily photography show on Facebook every weekday at 9.30. And I just wanted to talk a little bit today about shooting the fall colors and the last little bit of it. And that's what we we're trying to do today. Didn't get there. I got a couple other shots, but that was the one I put together. That sunrise was too good not to share, and the fall colors weren't really there. But what are you going to do? We should have gotten out a couple weeks ago, but uh, Sean was off uh, traipsing around the world. He was in Jordan, actually. And if you want to know more about Sean Bagshaw, tune in on Monday. Not for the photo moment, but later in the day on Monday. We're going to be doing a conversation with him, another conversations video. So he's coming into the studio. We're going to sit down and talk about his work, his career, his life as a photographer, and show off some of his unbelievably awesome landscape work. So that's what we're going to be doing on Monday. Uh, for shooting the fall colors, and just a kind of a general thing here, one of the things I wanted to point out, so Mary, who was watching my uh, watching yesterday's video, had commented about the lens, that was a two days ago video, commented about the lens at 7 to 14 wide, and said, oh, so is that an ideal landscape lens? And hello, Maurizio from Rome. I'm, uh, thank you for tuning in at 5.30 your time. Uh, she had asked about that lens, saying, is that an ideal landscape, that 7 to 14? This is on the Lumix, so that's a 14 to 28 millimeter equivalent. And I said, Sure, it could be if that's the kind of landscape stuff that you like. But personally, and this is something that I picked up from Sean, uh, I prefer to shoot landscapes with a really long lens, shooting telephoto. So the shot that was on here that you saw, let me just pull that up and then I'll switch over to this camera again. Uh, here we go. So this shot here is shot with a long lens. That is a the 70 to 200 mil equivalent. It is probably... Uh, actually, it's probably pretty close to 200, although I'd have to go back and double check it. But that is uh, that is where you get that kind of shot, this compression that's not super wide. If we were looking at a super wide angle, we would have seen almost the ground in front of me and just crazy wide angle, just not, not really pretty, not really ideal. I have found, again, under the tutelage of Mr. Sean Bagshaw, that shooting long lenses for landscape can often give you a much more beautiful, much more pleasant view. In fact, if... Um, I'm, hopefully I'm remembering the right prints, but if we go back probably a month or two in my photo moments, I did a video about uh, prints, a company called Magnachrome. I was sh showing off some of the metal prints that were from that place. And some of the shots that I showed that I had hanging up here were fall colors from a couple of years ago. And those were shot, again, universally with a long lens. So if you're out shooting whatever landscape, obviously it doesn't matter, it doesn't have to be fall colors, but whatever landscapes, don't just naturally assume that the wide angle lens is the way to go. That seemed logical. It's a landscape. You want a wide lens to get it all in, but maybe not. Think about that long lens. Think about the compression that you're going to get out of that, how you're going to make those mountain ranges feel bigger, more, more looming than they actually are being way off in the distance. That long lens is probably a preferable lens for a lot of landscape the work that you might be doing. So check it out. Next time you go out shooting landscape photography, bring a long lens. Okay. That's that's it. That's I I just I spent all my energy this morning from 6:30 to 8:30 out trying to get some of these shots and then scrambling to put this video together. I hope you like that. Uh, this will be up, uh, up, of course, on YouTube soon, so you can see it again if you missed it. And uh, that's it. Anybody out there, I see there's a few people watching live. If you got any comments, questions, you know what to do, throw them, throw them out here. I just realized that I never switched back to my camera this whole time I've been talking. You've been looking at that picture, um, which is a pretty picture. It's probably prettier than looking at me anyway. So there you go. What are you going to do? All right, folks, thanks for tuning in today. We're calling it a short moment, and uh, we're going to cut it off there. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>